Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Pure Dog Talks Live at 5. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and I am so excited to have you all join us. I am super excited about tonight's special guest, Mary Albee, the original co-founder of Pure Dog Talk. Well, everyone is hopping on. I've got a couple items for the good of the order for you guys. In case you haven't heard, recently we launched a, a new, very, very cool opportunity and a different way to access the archives. And I've had people asking for this for uh, a while now. So I've done all the searching and the hunting and the pecking for you. So for the low, low introductory price of only a buck 99, you can download an entire album on a specific topic. And so the topics are things like breeding and whelping the hands-on part, right? The interviews, all of our veterinary voices, owner handlers, love the breeds from Azawak to Sholo Exquintly, um, all kinds of stuff. So go check it out. Natalie's going to drop a, a link for you guys to be able to go find that on the website. And as always, our success is your success. If you haven't yet, please do check out our exclusive patrons group. Your added perk to this is the pure pep talk, which is a weekly text message with an upbeat, fun, educational little tidbit usually drawn from the archives. And you can sign up for the patrons group and the pep talk messages for as little as $10 a month. I mean, come on, it's the price of a couple drinks at your favorite coffee stand. And that's for a month. It's a whole lot more for a whole lot less than you can get lots of other places. <laughs> so of course, more support gets you more access. So there's that. Bottom line, your passion is our purpose. Check it all out on the website, puredogtalk.com. Also, a quick programming note. You can also catch me tomorrow night, if you just need to have two doses of Laura, at Vicki Roncati's Show Dog Prep School, doing a Facebook Live talking about passing the torch to the next generation of breeders. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. That's going to be a really great conversation. And now, let's get this party started. Welcome, Mary. This hey, adventure we're <laughs> all on was Mary's brainstorm when I didn't even know there was such a thing as a podcast. Mary is a Hollywood stunt coordinator and possibly even more of a behind the scenes type than I am. So that's why I'm here. So <laughs> <laughs> And so I wanted, I invited Mary because I really wanted to offer up some behind the scenes glimpses of how Pure Dog Talk came to nearly 600 episodes, y'all. Like literally 600, number 600. Hey, congratulations, drops. Laura. Congratulations. Woo, woo, woo. Everybody out there, drop your questions in the chat and <laughs> share your favorite episode and how. The podcast has impacted your time in dogs. And if you tell a really cool story, Natalie likes your story enough, you might even get invited up here to join Mary and I on camera. So Mary, here's, here's by the numbers, 1.6 million downloads, 317,000 unique listeners. That's more than AKC has breeders of merit PS. 600 episodes. Can you believe that? Uh, not really, especially since we barely knew what a podcast was when we started. It's just your bright <laughs> idea. Anybody, not than anybody else, because nothing existed like that at the time. <laughs> no, no, Let we are the OG. To do one. For real. Yeah. <laughs> we are the OG. So talk to us. Tell, tell people out there in listener land how you struck upon this idea. I mean, I met you for the first time out of complete serendipity do at a dog show in Southern California in May of yeah, 2000. We were in Torrance. We were in Torrance watching you. We were, canopies were outside the ring. I think Maureen Kenton was set up with us too. And mm -hmm. Eugene Blake was in the ring judging. And we're sitting there talking about 
the lack of education and, um, you know, how you couldn't find any resources or anything else. And there was just nothing out there. And that's, we, we kind of hooked up on the, um, same mode over the same purpose, but right. had no clue what to do or how to do it. And so, well, and, and I think we had both kind of explored different ideas. Like you were working on a thing. I was working on a thing. Neither one of those things ever really became a thing, but pure dog talk did. So, right. and, and, and what's sort of important is that you and I were completely from different worlds. Okay. Oh you were a, <laughs> you were a, you know, second generation breeder, merit professional dog handler, you know, you knew everybody and everything and stuff like that. And I'm like, I got my first show dog, which on Norwegian accounts, by the way, I got my first show dog out of a newspaper ad. Okay. <laughs> and that's what I took in the ring. So I'm like your regular owner handler that, you know, that knew nothing. And that was actually one of our biggest, um, searches, I think, to begin with was in what are we going to do for an audience? Um, mm -hmm. Because you'd be saying, well, we're going to talk about structure and soldiers. And I'm like, going, huh? Because <laughs> 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 you were doing vocabulary that I had no idea what you were even talking about. All I am, you know, I mean, I'm like the weekend, you know, the, the, your regular owner handler. I'm the person that goes on the weekend. To me, showing dogs was a really fun tailgate party. I take my motor home. I'd pick a circuit. And I was like, Hey, where do I want to go camping? Hey, let's go to Montana. Sounds good. Right. You know, <laughs> so and it that. was kind of a cool break from Hollywood. I mean, come on, let's just be yes. real. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was my time off for sure. So, um, and you did not want to be the one on camera. Remember at that point in time for all y'all that have been around for a minute, I was, I, I'm a journalist. That's what I did at the time I was writing a weekly column for a now defunct online dog magazine called Best in Show Daily. And so As the Wheels Turn was my, at the time, contribution to the, to the dog world scene. And, and so Mary and I started talking about this and she's like, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, this is what I do. What do you do? <laughs> and, and she said, well, I want to do a podcast. I'm like, I don't know what a podcast is. And she's trying to explain it to me. And I'm like, how about if I just write your scripts? Would that, would that be okay? She's like, no. <laughs> so, yeah. So we find, and you know, I really didn't know how to do any of this. So we kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I went to all the conferences and tried to learn how to do it. And we like pick a piece of equipment. We were learning how to do microphones. There was no Facebook live. At that I time. still there have. No... Okay, Mary, Mary. You don't have my Yeti, do you? Oh this, my God. This is the same Yeti that you gave me wow. six years okay. ago. Right here, right here. The same okay. microphone. And, oh, wait for it. The same, wait, come on, come on, Laura, you can do this. The same pop same filter. Same windscreen. <laughs> hey, they still work, you know? They, they do. Work, so. They've been great. They've served you me know, the same headset. I mean, so I think one of our stuff. other ch challenges was once we had our, we, we could not figure out our audience. Um, we knew we wanted to do the education. And this is how everything ended up being so varied, I believe, on the show. It finally worked, but I mean, I was going, I don't know that this is going to work because you had your pure, all purebred dogs, okay? So you had the, the dogs in the show ring. Well, well, do we do just confirmation? And then, well, you can't just interview handlers and do breeds because that leaves out the people like me that don't know anything. And then, well, what about performance? And what about this? And so we kind of tried to structure it where we broke up those audiences first and did multiple yeah. shows a week. And that was just yeah. shoot me in the head. Let's that was way that too first. much. Let's talk about that first year where I was still showing dogs professionally and I was dropping three podcasts a week. <laughs> can, can we talk about that for a minute? Cause I'm sick. And I was editing them at two o'clock in the morning when I got off work. Right. Exactly. And posting them up because I was on the road. Um, we do have to give a shout out to Lance from Croatia, which is how I referred to him for years. Um, yep. My producer is still Lance. <laughs> the producer that you found way back when is still producing the shows. And I think I, I love that. And Lance is and now an integral part of the team. His girlfriend does the website. I mean, mm -hmm. it's all in the family. Yeah, no, it, it was very interesting. I mean, 
uh, and then, he, you know, I think our problem was there was just so many topics. So then it's like, well, how do we, you know, bring it down to a particular audience? And then for those of you that don't know Laura out here, and I'm sure you do by now, um, Laura is like the ultimate squirrel. You know, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Okay. Any freaking shiny light that pops in their head. Okay. She wants to go off and do. I'm like, ask um, Marty Greer about that. All right. We're chasing squirrels again, Marty. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Laura, you can't just do something in a week. Okay. You can't put a seminar in a week. Why are we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why, why are we doing this? No, 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 no. Laura, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> If it makes you feel better, Mary, I'm still chasing squirrels. So, you know. <laughs> and then there was the, our first, we went up to your house in Oregon because I was in California and we had to do the vocal coaching session. Yes. Okay. I need you to tell people about this because in my mind's eye, I've got this, this scary Hollywood person coming and plonking me down <laughs> at my dining room table with this foreign stuff and saying, go. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, Laura, you sound like you were talking to a funeral. Okay, let's put a smile on your face. Let's do the intro again. Then smile. <laughs> you need to be happy when you do this. Let's get a little bit of like, you don't want people to turn it off because of the introduction going, hi, this is pure dog talk. Have you, you listened know? to a lot of other podcasts out there? Trust me, your coaching stood us in good stead. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was uh, fun and entertaining at the same time because it's like do it, it again, was, do it, it again, do it again. There could have been a little bit of wine involved, just as a possibility. <clears throat> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but Mary flying up here and plonking the mic down in front of me and saying "go," it, I will never forget that day. I was so intimidated because it's a good thing we I, weren't live. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. It would have been so horrifying. So horrifying. And it took me, it has taken me all of this time to be able to be comfortable to even sit down and do a Facebook live. Like, you know mm -hmm. how awkward I am about being on video. I'm like, no, no, no. I no. You're a natural. You're a natural. So I'm going to make a compliment here because one of the things that I like about pure dog talk now. Okay. Is it's sort of a news source. Mm -hmm. And what I say by that is there's things that like the otter hound episode. Okay. I don't know if you remember that one when, uh, oh, yeah, way the, back. the, I mean, some of the episodes that were cutting edges, something was just being announced or somebody was, you know, I mean, um, I loved, uh, Lori, I forgot what her last name is with the, with the cadaver oh, dog. Yeah. The cadaver dog, right? From Orlando. The, the Catahoula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just some of the stuff like I didn't know any of this existed. So it was interesting for me to like, oh, wow, I didn't know that was there. That was that was cool. But you okay, had the okay, resources. Okay. My favorite, when it was your friend that you worked with in Crossing Jordan. Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> Jerry O'Connell, you guys, if you've never seen that, you've got to go back and find the video on the website because remember I mentioned that, that Mary's a, a stunt coordinator and worked in Hollywood on what the whole time of crossing Jordan. Yeah. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And so Jerry O'Connell, who's the head uh, whoopee whoopee in that show that I had never seen at that time. I have to tell you. I only knew him from Stand By Me, and Mary's like, oh, God, don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that's when he was the little fat kid. We don't talk about that time. <laughs> that's the only way I knew him. I had never, I'm not a TV person. I so this was because him. of one of your other squirrel moments, okay? Because yes. you made me buy plane tickets to Orlando, Florida, to go to the <laughs> AKC National, which was at that time, Yukonuba, right? No. It was, was right. It, it was Yukonuba before it was Royal Canaan. Maybe anyway, it was wherever right. it was. Yeah. I don't know. And she goes, hey, let's go do live ringside at the AKC National Show. <laughs> and that started my fascination with the FSS breeds because we did the open show. And now I own a Fove. So I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> And that's where Jerry O'Connell was. He was wandering around. He was one of like the color hosts for the yes. um, 
And so I walk up and go, hey, Jerry, am I going <laughs> to? And so we I'm just did it. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so I have the cutest picture with me and this super famous guy that I had no idea who he was. <laughs> So. Um, the the one I remember the most, and I'm not sure if it was that year or the year before that, it might have even been the year before that, when you and I went and we printed out the flyers and we walked around the entire dog show putting those flyers on every the single grooming table. Grooming table. <laughs> I will never, ever forget that. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard to advertise a podcast when people don't know what a podcast don't is. Know what it is, and they didn't yeah, know how to access it. And teaching people what it was and how to get it. Yeah, and you know, I mean, some of the first episodes, which I think are still some of the better episodes, like how to stack your dog. I mean, yeah. the one you fought me it's over was how to count how to count people. your points. Yeah, how to count all... your points, and I keep I referring to people you. to like how to count your points. There's a book here somewhere on my on my on my bookshelf. Some woman that wrote a book about dog shows and called me up and asked to have the transcript from How to Count Your Points to put as a chapter in her book. <laughs> but this, but this was like an example of. Well, of course, Laura, you knew all this, and I'm like, no. And you'd say, well, they know all that. No, they don't. You have to go step by step by step by step. I go, you know, I was afraid we were going to bore some people. But I'm sure you know, how do you, how do, how do you, you know, how do you please everybody? That's always the challenge. And I think that always will be the challenge. Right. Well, and I remember very, very early on, right in the very beginning, some of my handler friends um, who said to me at the time, they're like, you know, I know this, but I can't teach it. And I'm so impressed with your ability to take what we know in our heads and turn it into something that somebody else can can learn from. And I think that that is definitely one of my favorite things. And Larissa, shout out. Hey, Larissa, how you doing? Um, said that the points episode was so helpful. So there you go. Um, that was <laughs> one of my favorites, you know one of my favorites. Mary, I have to tell you, and this is, uh, you've been, you know, pursuing other projects for some time now, but I, I am deadly serious when I say, I get on average an email message, text, whatever, if not daily, multiple times a week from people for whom the podcast has made them able to do what they can do at the dog show or in their dog life or in their breeding life, or you saved my dog's life, or you and Marty saved my dog's life, or you are the reason I'm at the dog show or you are the reason that my dog is no champion. I just got that today. You know, it, Mary, the thing that we started all those years ago, kind of a little teeny tiny bit has changed a little teeny tiny corner of the world. And that's kind of cool. That's cool. It is cool. Because <laughs> I would never have come up with this on my own. I'd have still been out there pounding my head against somebody's wall. Um, yeah, and but so you're also the one that knew everybody and... We're up to date on stuff. I mean, I didn't get the AKC and you would start diving in with, and you made the, the AKC and people are probably not going to like this one, but you actually made them kind of human. The people, yeah. it was, it, so it wasn't kind the AKC, you know, right. it was, well, here's, you know, this person from the AKC and this person, you know, Mark or, Dunn and right. Mark Dunn's passionate right. about this project and this is what he's right. working on. And, um, right. you know, just the, the different people that, um, you know, a lot of them that came from the trenches, a lot of them were prior handlers and exhibitors right. and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, it just goes back to that whole essence thing of do you care about purebred dogs? Do you care about the future of purebred dogs? I mean, we did the, that episode with Bill Shelton uh, yes. when we went to Bill's house. Okay. Yes. Yes. That was I a will long, never that was a two part of it. Sitting around the table at Bill's house and, um, um, Steve Larley was there and the, the, and then big, they went and got Becky, the vet across the street to come Becky over came, and then the, the, um, what do you call it? The big clock kept chiming. <laughs> I'm like, Oh no, not that, not the clock again. Yeah. But you know, and that was back at the beginning of purebred mm -hmm. preservation. 
okay mm -hmm. and yep. you know what do we call it preservation breeders and you know what was the name and how do we start this process and i mean that's still kind of like one of the stories i tell all the time is well why do you breed purebred dogs because you know if you want to ever have any boxers you in 20 years if you still want to have boxers you have to breed boxers okay so to me they're an endangered species as far as the future of some of the purebred dogs so well and that's what it is motivation. And I say this routinely, regularly on every show and frequently in regular conversation, purebred dogs are history and they are art and they are a link. They're living history that links us to a particular place and a particular people and a particular time where hunting moose with your elk hound was literally how your family survived the winter that is living history. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is really cool. Shout out. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sandy. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I the patrons group is a perfect example of people who, I mean, in extremis, when I had personally, Stacy had the car accident, I had to park a bunch of dogs. Who's who stepped up? I'm going to tell you who stepped up. It was oh. the patron. It was a, well, I mean, Mary, you did, but members of our patrons group took my yeah. dog for mm -hmm. multiple months and not necessarily easy dogs. And it, the community that has been built around this idea that you had. We had, don't be putting it on me. <laughs> No, you had the idea of a podcast. No, 100%. It, the podcast was your idea. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't even know there was one. But but I, you had the idea. I grew it. I, I think we can share that pretty safely. Hmm. But um, it really is a thing, babe. It really is. Oh, and you've done a great job with it. And, it's, and I think one of the biggest things is now that we have more Facebook and more um, technology, interactive technology, the fact that people can actually ask questions when it's time to ask questions where instead of it just being a recorded course and you watch the course and you don't get to really get anything answered out of it versus seeing it live or uh, being able to at that point go, well, what about this? Or I don't understand go this. To the um, patrons group. Go to the community of people. And, you know, the other thing is the patrons group, particularly, we have the, that private Facebook page. And it's all people who are avid uh, uh, Pure Dog Talk listeners, and they have knowledge themselves. And so there is a sharing of real knowledge in this group that isn't available. My big thing, and I remember talking to you about this back in the day, is I hate the keyboard warriors that still exist, that are out there spouting <laughs> off opinions about which they know nothing. Right. right. And and instead of the, you know, dog show judges report card, why don't you go listen to the podcast that interviews that exact judge? Right. And hear, hear what they're, they're really about from it. their own words, from their own mouth. And mm -hmm. that to me is still absolutely invaluable. Well, and then you do things like I'm going to have to plug my own breed here for a second. But in two Absolutely. weeks, you get a podcast dropping on Norwegian yes. accounts, right? With yes. Camilla Engen who was our judge for our national, but wait, this is a hunting judge. Somebody that's actually she in literally Norway, is still hunting, hunting, moose in Norway. hunting moose with in Norway with Norwegian elk hounds. And I'm like, Laura, you got to interview her, please, please, please. <laughs> when I put that up, the elk hound people made a concerted effort. Like every single <laughs> owner of an elk hound in the world, I'm pretty sure, bombed the page. <laughs> We did. We sort of overwhelmed you on that one. You're like, you're like, not okay. getting a choice. Totally. It's there's only a few, and there's not that many count. of us. So we all count for like a hundred or a thousand votes each, you know? <laughs> well, it was interesting to me <clears throat> how many, I mean, the big requests we had, elk hounds, black and tan coon hounds, which dropped last week, and Basse Fauve de Bretagne, which is a brand new FSS breed. Um, this now just moved to miscellaneous it's an old breed but not very many people know about it and those are the ones i'm like oh okay you guys asked <laughs> well what is the what did we write passion is our purpose now what is it yes 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, your passion is our purpose. And that is there a you fact. Go. Which so, we, spent, I, we spent a month writing the stupid intro. Yes, we did. A, a whole <laughs> month writing the intro. Okay. Well, <laughs> and, then, my favorite and then getting is, Laura to be able to say the words pure dog talk. <laughs> no, my favorite is how long it took us to decide on a name and how oh, yeah. all many billion Google searches we did trying to decide on a name. <laughs> Hi, Tara. How are you? Tara says she was a new exhibitor, started in 2017, and after listening to hundreds of your episodes, I learned a ton of stuff, and I've been able to raise and train six dogs, oh my gosh, to oh gain new championships and raise three litters, two of which are my new champions. Oh my God, that is so amazing, Tara. Shout out. That yeah, is nice. unbelievable. I have well, to see, tell you. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Mary, you go. So one of the things that I lost my train of thought for a second was that I did not have a mentor. Okay. And so everybody's saying, well, get a mentor in your breed. Et cetera, et cetera. I didn't have like the mentor. I had a lot of wonderful elk camp people, you know, on the path that helped me with different things, but I didn't have a mentor. Um, and so for me, pure dog talk helped fill a lot of those spots. I mean, I'm still listening to, I think it's episode 12, 13, and 14 of Gail Watkins on how to whelp a litter. I, go I mean, every time, every, every time, time every time I breed, I'm like, wait a minute, let me go listen to the episodes again. Let's make sure I didn't forget anything. Now. <laughs> you know, I don't breed her merit well, now, but you know. <laughs> right. right. And, and, you know, here's the thing that I'll say, I've been breeding dogs. My family's been breeding dogs since the mid seventies. We had our first litter of lab puppies when I was like 10. And, I will tell you, I learned things in that episode. I changed my behaviors and how I handled my litters based on those interviews with Gail. That 1000% impacted my mm. life, my life. And I've been doing this my whole life, right? And so that means something. And I just, that's what matters to me. You know, we, we have become, as one of my interviewees said to me, he's like, oh my God, you're one of the 10% um, of podcasts that makes money. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we are. Um, and the reason for that is because of you guys out there in listener land, because you care and you share it with your friends. And we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of ears. You can't say eyeballs because, you know, it's a podcast. <laughs> but that matters. And the more that we have support from corporate community, from within our community financially, the more we can do. And so that was one of the things that Mary and I want to talk about a little bit tonight is we're episode 600. This is six years in. And I feel like we've barely scratched the surface. That's what I think. I don't know, Mary, what do you think? What y'all want? <laughs> Pretty much, y'all drop it in drop it in the chat. I saw want? you there, Brian Black. I I if I could if I could tell you the number of hours I've driven with anyone I've never met, walked on a treadmill with people I've never met, ridden in lawnmowers with people I've never met. <laughs> I would be in much better physical condition, I'm just saying, if I was with them actually. <laughs> Um, so, so yes, drop your ideas in the chat. As you know, this is a democracy here at Pure Dog Talk. We are always interested in your opinions and I do a lot of, we need more episodes. Yes. I, okay. Got that. Good. Good. Larissa. I got you. <laughs> I think we're solid on that. Um, but I want to continue to build out the additional resources. So the albums next year, my schedule eases up quite a bit. So I'm super excited about the opportunities that I'll have to spend a little more time building out some of the, some of the extras at Pure Dog Talk that I just haven't had time because I just haven't been home this year. So things like building out the um, albums more, and I want to really build on something that had been in my heart when Mary and I first started talking, which is basically a university. Pure Dog Talk University, 
where we can offer classes. And there's one of the albums is the Pure Dog Talk University on breeding dogs. So um, that's the kind of thing. Hi, Jess. It was great to meet you in Chicago too. Absolutely fabulous. Um, you're an episode about the challenge that purebred dog owners face in urban areas. Oh my gosh, Jess, we just were talking about this on the um, After Dark last night with the patrons. Um, the importance and the necessity of trying to reincarnate, reinvigorate, reestablish purebred dogs in urban centers and dog shows. And that's why I have been so supportive of IKC and any of the other um, dog shows that are taking place in urban environments because that that's a battleground area for us in purebred dogs. And how we do that and ideas that we have to make that move forward into the coming years, I think are so important. So, so I, I would add to that one. Okay. Um, I remember way back when we started these different topics, that was the way we handled it was we right. broke into topics. Okay. Right. And we were doing the legislation topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we with still AKC do. and AKC government. We still do that. Okay. And AI, um, all that. And in, answer, in answering that question about the urban areas, part of it's also defending your rights, um, mm -hmm. but using the power of your of the audience as far as pure dog talk goes is creating an, like an education, whatever you want to call it, module on mm -hmm. how to answer the questions, why purebred dogs, mm -hmm. what, why about the don't adopt, don't shop, adopt, I can't remember how that thing goes, but anyway. Adopt, don't shop, right? Um, yeah, that so one. okay. So maybe and, put them together because we've talked about doing, um, st you know, what's your stump speech, and maybe we could just literally start brainstorming ways for people to access things that are easy, meme level, even right, little short clippy things that yeah. address some yeah. of that. And your, you and your bumper, sticker, your bumper stickers, and everything else. But um, mm -hmm. the I know AKC at one point on the governmental side of them, they put out a whole bunch of talking points. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also, but some of those talking points were for speaking to your legislatures versus when mm -hmm. the person comes up to you and goes, oh, is that a purebred dog? You know, so the talking points, I'm here, I am thinking. back for the common person. She's always the, the you, know, no, 100%. Because, you know, what happens when your neighbor says, well, I have a doodle and, you know, okay. <laughs> so. Um, nothing against doodles. I'm just, I'm just saying is why, why have a purebred dog? Okay. Right. Why it matters. And it's like, you know, to me, they're going to be going extinct. They are, um, endangered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody can get on board with the endangered whale we and the endangered the, everything else. We did else. the episode on Laotian and they're literally mm -hmm. based on their existing numbers going to be extinct in like 10 years. Yeah. So, um, that would be a module I would. I would just ask for. Mm, I like it. I like it. Definitely drilling down on that. And Renee Wagner has a great idea. Dog show etiquette. Don't let your boy dogs pee on something that somebody else has to touch. Hello. That should be pretty obvious. Dog. Don't let pe dogs pee on things. Pick up your dog's poopy. O-M-G people pick up your poopy. Um... Yeah, that's good, Larissa. We've had a few of those, and that's a great idea to kind of do more of those. Larissa was asking about people that start in dogs, not as a junior, because we've done quite a bit of that, but older into their 20s. Um, it's a middle ground that isn't talked about as much. And I've done a number of interviews with folks that started in dogs as empty nesters, right? Started in dogs mm -hmm. at 40 or 50. Which right? is a very and good audience, by the way. It is. And that's, I mean, you and I talking about this way back in the day, that's a lot of who we talk to is, mm -hmm. is women between 40 and 60. Sorry, but that's, that's a big old honk and chunk yeah. of our audience. And many of them are new to dogs. Um, do not let your dog pee on anything man-made. Yeah. Great idea. I like that. I like that, Sandy. <laughs> Oh. Or my leg, come on. <laughs> At the dog show. Don't you love it when you're standing don't there? Don't be on me really? and your jumping on the on tent. Me. I'm saying <laughs> those are the things. Uh, really. Um, but I think that, you know, there's a lot of room there 
to maneuver. And so I just, I also want to take a minute just to, just to give a couple little shout outs because I think sometimes we forget and give short shrift, but um, we've had a number of supporters, um, advertisers, sponsors, et cetera, over the years. But I would be willing to, to say out loud that one of the most influential was the Dog Show Superintendents Association that was our very first yes. sponsor. And mm -hmm. uh, Becky was Summer. the first one to put and it on their Becky website. Summer. Yep. And, and having that clickable logo for people to find on the three major dog show entry websites was unbelievable. There was no way we would have, have gone as far as fast as we have without that. Um, like and then, credibility. well, it was, it was not just credibility. It was awareness. I mean, it was, it was both people didn't know it existed. How was anybody going to know unless they got a flyer on their table in Orlando in 2016. <laughs> 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 right? But, um, I, that was huge. And then, you know, that early work that we did, and I've been super excited to have, um, Allison Alexander from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, where she would come on once a week and do a tip of the week. Now she's coming every couple months and we're doing, you know, stuff, content that's a whole podcast. And listeners really liked that. And and Pure Dog Talk and Leading Edge Dog Show Academy really grew together, right? So yeah. that has been really fun. Um, and Vicki Ronchetti that I'm doing her show tomorrow night at Show Dog Prep School, same kind of thing. Right. So I, one of the things that I have felt very strongly about, um, and, and isn't always as easy to do as you might think, but I have felt very strongly about it is that collaboration is the power move, not competition. And we're all in this together and we're all trying to reach people and everybody learns in a different way and supporting other women that are roughly my age in roughly the same industry doing roughly the same thing instead of trying to run them down rather supporting them and helping them grow helps us grow too and that's something that is like really important to me so there's that and I, I have to thank Mary because I'm pretty sure that you're the one that found Allison when she was just starting Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And you're the one who's <laughs> that, that was an interesting conversation. Yeah. And it mm -hmm. was, and she was, there was some other people doing stuff and they were going to be competitive. And she said, sounds good. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, no, it really, it, that w has been great. And Allison and I have done, you know, like, um, um, handicapping at Westminster. And we've done, we've just done a lot of really fun stuff together. And I, I look back over the course of time and I think about all of the people in all of the places and all of the things that have helped us take each one of those steps and Trupanion came on board and Embark came on board and Revival came on board. And these are all important, important things that have made it. So all of us, um, can get can get the information that we need and want. I, I think that's what counts. So, okay. Anybody else have questions? Anybody else? And someone said, "Oh, it just just." I asked them if they'd like to take home with them. So that is that is so bad. Um, the dog community can work together with the vet schools to bring new vets into our world, rather than. Um, yes, that is something. You'll have to tell that, your story about the vet school that you just had. Yes, yes. I, um, I've i actually had um, Chris and Tom Levy on to talk about it, but this is something that I feel incredibly um, strongly about. Again, another one of those things. Imagine that. Like, I hmm. feel strongly about something. I know it's weird, right? <laughs> um, the work that that we're doing at Pure Dog Talk, the work that Susan Patterson's doing, um, working with uh, the vet schools out by her, where we are actually interacting with the veterinary students and talking to them about purebred dogs. And Chris Levy is is the person, Chris and Tom Levy are the people who have made it possible here on the West Coast, gave an endowment to the Oregon State University Vet School. 
and that got us in the door. And we've now done a couple presentations to the vet, their vet students, and we also just did one to the WSU vet students um, in April. And this is something, and I know I've talked about it on a variety of different situations and places, but you guys, anybody that's out here listening, if you are near a vet school, find a way to adopt a vet student. Find a way to adopt a baby veterinarian. They need to hear from the people who are actually the subject matter experts on dog breeding and purebred dogs. And they have been inculcated with information from um, those fundraising organizations that shall remain nameless that tells them that those people know more about dogs and we are the bad guys and we are Satan. And as a result, we have veterinarians who will not um, do a C-section on your bitch if you don't spay her on the table. Um, we have veterinarians who will not crop and dock. We have veterinarians who will force our puppy buyers or attempt to force our puppy buyers into spaying and neutering at before six months pediatric spay neuters that we know are so so devastatingly detrimental to our dogs so establishing ourselves with these veterinary veterinarians veterinary students veterinary schools near us as in addition to our legislators right establishing ourselves as the subject matter experts we know what we're talking about we know more about dog breeding and puppy whelping than 98 percent of the veterinarians that graduate because in the three presentations that i have spoken to veterinary students in anywhere from first to fourth year when we ask them if they're interested in reproductive help one or two of them will go kind of like this down here where nobody can actually see them raising their hand because they don't want their friends to know that they're interested in working in theriogenology. So that's the thing, y'all. Back on your subject about uh, cooperation. Mm. Um, here's another one as far as supporting the community as a whole, okay? Mm -hmm. Is, mm -hmm. and I know we started this, you know, Bible preaching way, way, way back about. Do you, we are a little bit preachy, preachy. <laughs> Okay, do you belong to a local kennel club? Mm -hmm. Do you participate? Okay, again, none of, none of them get along. They all have, you know, the fogies that run the clubs and the whatever. And, I mean, it's, it's, and every kind of nightmare every, you can imagine. Kind of social group, whatever, okay? But you kind of have to go with a higher standard that, look, if you want dog shows, you need to participate in putting on a dog show. You need mm -hmm. to be part of your regional kennel, your regional breed club. You have to be part of your national breed club. Same thing. Some of the people, some of them, and they're usually going to be some of the older people are, can be difficult. Okay. And they kind of come from an older perspective than our people that are growing up. Somebody was asking about, well, if you started showing your twenties and thirties, well, you're a different mm -hmm. generation. Okay. You don't have to follow the backstabbing, generation, you know, right. you can support, you gotta go to the higher purpose of your breed. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you want your breed to exist and participation, 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 if you're not going to put the energy and the effort in, you know, you're not walking it. And, and here's the other one. You don't get to complain. You don't get to bitch. You don't get to jack your jaws about X, Y, or Z at X, Y, or Z dog show, unless you are putting in the work somewhere and know what it takes to put on a dog show and that is that's pretty much like my bottom line anybody that complains at me i'm like so do you volunteer for your local club mm -hmm. have you been show chair yet are you assistant show chair you, you, done trophies? you take oh, do you take one bleeping weekend off each year of showing your precious Prisky pampered pet in order yeah, to somebody was also asking about judges. Somebody mm -hmm. was asking about judges. You want to know about judges, ring steward. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Right. Because if you're ring stewarding, you're going to know what that judge is thinking. They're going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. You learn so much by just giving one day. There's 365 days. So yeah, right. Like one. So that's, that's my preachy, preachy, preachy for today. <laughs> I try to keep it to a bare minimum. Yeah. Our time has run out on the preaching. <laughs> preachy, preachy, done. Um, mostly, I, I, I just really am grateful to Mary for the idea of this. This has, um, you know, when I met Mary, my mom had just died six months before that, seven months before that. I was kind of a mess. And I was burned out and over it and really seeking um, something different to do with my life. My body was broken down. My brain was broken down. Like I was a shit show. And um, the podcast really kind of gave me a place to focus all that energy. And so thanks, Mary. I appreciate it. And absolutely. You've done a great job. All right, you guys, unless anybody has any other questions, we will give you back a few minutes of your Tuesday night. We really, really appreciate you. If you're out there on Facebook land, drop, drop ideas in the comments in the thread. I'll be following up on it. Um, Natalie and I'll be paying attention. So any ideas for future episodes, any, anything you just shout out. All right, Mary. Namaste, my friend. Namaste. All right. Good night, y'all.